Alright, so this is like a ways past the border check. I had problems with my connection. Um, but yeah, I made it to the border check fine. It was just American citizen. How are you? I was answering my boss's text and it shut my phone down. Just the service out here, pretty bad. <clears throat> anyway, um, I am, uh, yeah, so back to what I was saying, I don't really know where I left off exactly on that last documentary, but I was, I mean, that last, uh, my last YouTube video, but point being, I just want to, um, I have no, no, um, I have no degree, so I am basically, everything I do is going to be self-made, um, I have a GED. I finished eighth grade, then took my GED, made it through. Uh, wasn't pretty. Um, did got very good marks though in my GED when I finally took it. I did very well on that. That was good. Uh, did construction. Um, grew up in a very unique environment. Um, where I was uh, surrounded by um, aunts, uncles, nephews, friends. So we, my my, um, my parents basically started a construction company. They were young. They were in the, in their twenties, and they started a construction company in Colorado. Um, we're very good framers. But working year-round in Colorado outdoors was just not even possible. Um, you can work year-round, but to succeed year-round, it's just pretty much out of the question because the snowfall and all that. So they moved south to El Paso, Texas. And... Um, <laughs> basically migrated like birds and um, where you're able to work year round it's very hot in summer but the heat can be dealt with cold you really just you just can't survive in it like it's bad I mean and then too much heat obviously but it's not Death Valley it like gets to has it some 100 plus years like 13 I mean days like like I think like 60 100 plus days summer and um, they come on a bad year and then the rest of it's less than that I don't remember no the like, average but and like the high is like 110 113 but the rest of the year it's pretty good um, spring is uh, sorry I keep yelling and I just I got up early to drive over here um Spring is, um, like, um, really windy, super windy. Fall is the best time of year. It's absolutely beautiful after, like, like October, November, December, absolutely beautiful. December starts getting cold, but, um, yeah. It's late September, October, November, absolutely gorgeous in El Paso. Anyway, so, they went to a place where they could work year-round, excelled at construction, did very well, um, just framing, and then they started learning all trades and became a in-house complete, um, complete, um, we became a complete unit, you know, we could do everything from the ground up, so second generation, we obviously were raised doing that, and so I, basically, we had a small community which a lot of people look at as really strange these days, like, you know, because everybody's so isolated, but it was actually kind of, I was, uh, it, it's a funny thing, I grew up in a throwback to how things were before the turn of the century, like, you were with your family and your uncles and all that, and you went and worked on what they did, and if your, your uncle worked in the steel mill, then your brother, his brother, and then your dad, and then you, and then pretty soon it's like a family of steel mill workers, and then you know, you bought the farm next to you and you added on to it and it was just normal, dude. And then 
after World War, after the World Wars, like in the 50s and 60s, there started being this dream, the American dream, where you went, um, your dad went, would, would leave and go to the, um, to find it, like, my, my mom's dad was, okay, so they came from a logging community in Oregon, and, like, her uncles were all red-bearded loggers, you know, and then they made enough money to where, um, so they're, like, second-generation Scottish, I mean, like, literally, like, they're full-blood, my mom's full-blooded McLennan, like, uh, Scottish, marrying Scottish, they have their, uh, what's it called, their, uh, clan, and then they have their, uh, kilt, but they have tart, tartan, is that what it's called? I think it's called a tartan, but it's the, the actual weave of their own pattern, that's like their own, um, yeah, their own weave, like, it, it goes, I think it goes yellow, green, and then blue, blue, or something like that, and it's like the McLennan tartan, and like, you can, I can go order it right now, they'll have it woven for me, and brought and sent to me, and it's like, crazy, so, they were straight McLennans and stuff. So, the dad, um, her, her dad, her, her father's, my mother's father's parents, and my grandfather's parents made enough money for him to go work on the telephone company. He went to school, went to the telephone company, like, this is all first time, because everybody always used to, and there was the exceptions, but 90 there's always the guy that went off on the ship or whatever, but there's all, but as far as this new concept of putting your kid in school to where he makes enough money to where he can then do something different than the family is doing. And he worked for the telephone company and made enough money to where he bought a house in the fifties, I guess, in La Jolla, California, which is like people want, like, like, if you made it, you made it in La Jolla now. Like, La Jolla's like the, the shit. And he had a two-story house built on a cliff. You could see the ocean. No back, nobody behind him in the backyard. Like, I went and saw this thing in 85. Went and spent time out there. Um, first, first floor has a huge deck. There's a garage, or not a garage, but like a little outbuilding that's his computer shop. A big deck around the whole thing. I I wish I could find pictures of it. It's really nice. And then, um, overlooks Cardiff by the sea, I guess? Or, no, no, it overlooks the, the Hoya down there. I I don't know. I'm I'm not a San Diego kid. I'm, I'm, I'm a Texas boy, unfortunately, because I, even though I was born in Colorado, but I spent my whole life in Texas. Um, and or New Mexico. Um, So my, so he, he, yeah, this, like a monstrous house, like glass on the whole side, the views, um, the ocean view side is all glassed in big bay glass doors around it in the living room, kind of a modern fifties, like flat roof, flat square, beautiful place, dude. Now that I'm thinking of it, like, this is funny because this is like the first time. I just, like, just let my brain just sit there and think about that house right now. It's the first time in my life. I mean, I maybe thought of it, but never like this. So he, yeah, so, and then the second level is um, glass two, and it, it looks out over the ocean too. So, or I can't remember, maybe the second level you can't see the ocean. But literally, like, there's no houses behind it. Like, rolling hills going down with, like, scrub oak or whatever they have there. And vegetation. And you can see the ocean down there. Like, the surfers and stuff. And there's nothing in his view. Like, nothing. This guy, like, owned the hill right there. So, yeah. So, this is the concept of all of a sudden, people start taking... So, he moves. And there, there wasn't... I think all the rest of their people are in Oregon, from what I understand. And maybe her cousin Rod, or I don't know, I think it's my mom's cousin, Rod and Shirley, and I did meet them. And they ended up like having a yacht and stuff later. And then obviously her sisters moved with her, so it's three sisters. 
a dad and a mom, they move, um, the sisters, one of them ends up being gay, um, her oldest sister, her second, old, uh, she's the little sister, my mom is, um, my mom, um, is the, yeah, the third sister, my mom's the youngest, the middle sister, I think she was married for a while, never had kids as far as I know, or maybe did, no, I don't think she ever had kids, anyway, so they're, so they moved to Cali, so there's this concept, back to what I was saying, about this concept of, I'm sorry, I keep, I put my hand in front of your, my face, it's wrong, it's just like something I do to relax, it's really wrong, um, I'm never going to make it anywhere with these podcasts if I don't learn how to present myself right, um, so, um, right now I'm switch, which by the way, I'm switch, switching from I, Highway 10, I'm past Van Horn, Highway 10, and I-10, Interstate 10, that cuts all the way across from Florida to Cali. That one veers, I veer north on 20, and that goes up to Fort Worth, Dallas area. And on the way by, and that's where Pecos, it goes Pecos, Mid-Odessa, Midland, and that's all oil country, and I'm working in Pecos, by the way. Um, yeah, right now, I'm, I'm at the junction right now. And it's 38 miles to Pecos, 114 to Odessa. So I'm going to Pecos. Um, so yes, um, my there's this concept that now you can take your children, send them to school, and they can become. Oh yeah, so so my mom. Let me let me finish my mom's my grandfather's story. He um, becomes. Okay, so he's, he, he's working for the Bell Telephone Company, I believe, as some sort of a technician. I can't remember exactly. Buy stock in Ma Bell, who was, Bell Telephone was a monopoly. In the 80s, I believe, Ronald Reagan comes in, I believe this is when this happened, and says, no, boys, everybody's got to sell their stock. No, no, no. He has stock. He says everyone needs... Ma Bell needs to...